In day two of the 2016 Mid-Season Invitational, tournament favorites SK Telecom T1 faced off against the frontrunners from China, Royal Never Give Up. This 60-minute battle had some of the most exciting back-and-forth moments of the tournament, so let's take a look at some of them and analyze how the choices the teams made affected the outcome. The first play of the game happens around 3 minutes in, where Royal's MLXG on Graves decides to go for a level 3 gank onto Faker's Azir. At this point in the game, Graves had the red buff and Nidalee had blue, so both of them have a decent advantage as far as skirmishes go. However, Blank was far too aggressive and overcommitted. He was tanking the damage of both Xiao Hu's and MLXG's autos, the red buff dot, and auto attacks from a cannon minion. Although Nidalee's level 3 is strong, she is not strong enough to sustain this amount of damage. The best he could have hoped for in this situation was a 1 for 1 trade. Though this is a mistake on the part of Blank, Faker was also a big reason the exchange went badly. If he would have followed up by using his flash early offensively instead of defensively, SKT would have stood a much better chance at winning the trade. The result of this is Xiao Hu ending up with a blue buff, something that will make it very hard for Azir to snowball, and give RNG the mid lane sustain to keep lane pressure up in the early game. Later into the game, we see a severe misplay on the part of SKT's top laner Duke, who was playing Poppy this game. At this point, SKT are in a decent position. They are about to poke with Nidalee and slowly push up, but a timely flank from RNG forces them into a tough position. Like the last clip, this is a shining example of miscommunication within the team. Duke goes in for a balls to the wall engage onto Xiao Hu, who dodges with a timely LeBlanc dash. This leaves him completely open, and at 37 minutes into the game, even Poppy can't sustain the damage of 5 people for very long. This leaves SKT in a very awkward position, with several members in the red side jungle heading towards the river. With Duke dead, there is no reasonable option for an SKT engage, meaning that Wolf has to basically sacrifice himself for his teammates. This could have gone much worse, but a very well-timed flash from Faker kept him alive right in the end. Mata was definitely the star of this fight. His constant aggression and a threat of flash pulverize keeps SKT from following Duke when he makes the initial engage. In the third clip of the game, Xiao Hu lands a perfect LeBlanc combo onto Faker as he's clearing waves, eliminating the main threat of the SKT lineup. Even though SKT rotate up to the top lane to clean up LeBlanc, RNG are not far behind. A home guarded Maokai TP in buys RNG the time they need for the rest of the team to get there. SKT manage to hold their own in the fight, but some effective zoning and pressure from Mata results in Blank and Bang unable to deal as much damage as they'd like. The consistent damage from Jin and Graves gives RNG a massive advantage in this 4v4, and they manage to take out everyone except from Bang, losing only Mata in the process. Taking Baron after a fight like this, at this point in the game, gives them the option of exuding even more pressure onto the inhibitors of SKT. Much like last clip, the fourth prominent moment of the game begins with Faker being picked off by Mata. The combination of LeBlanc, Graves, and Alistar's overwhelming damage meant he wasn't able to flash fast enough to live. This kind of pick immediately puts SKT on the back foot, and RNG are able to take control of the middle of the map. Later, Duke makes the call to aggress and re-engage. This allows RNG to follow up with even more kills, but Mata is picked off when he overextends. This fight ends so disjointedly that RNG were unable to extend their lead, despite picking off Faker. This fifth clip is crucial, as it is the first time that SKT display any real strength and net themselves an important objective. The key to SKT's strength here is that it's one of the first times they've had a numbers advantage, and at 53 minutes into the game, the respawn timers are incredibly high. A mistake from Xiao Hu on LeBlanc meant that SKT were able to push into mid, and despite strong poke from Jin, SKT were able to pick up an inhibitor and rotate to Baron. RNG were a few seconds too late, granting SKT the ability to get away. A fight of this magnitude, this late in the game, essentially evens out an otherwise uneven game. Tower disadvantages are negligible, and can be turned on a dime. The game ending fight begins at relatively neutral position. SKT have just turned the game around, making decent use of their Baron buff to open up the map in their favor. However, in terms of items and economy, everyone is full build and the only scaling left to do is the 5th Dragon. SKT recognizes very quickly and position themselves to take a fight in their favor. They are here strictly to prevent RNG from freely taking it. This, while probably being the right thing to do, gives RNG the opportunity to engage around the river for a full 5 on 5 teamfight. Despite being very low on health, Mata is able to land a strong engage onto the front line of SKT. This causes SKT to immediately blow their primary disengage ultimates, being Poppy and Azir.
Although SKT secures the dragon, Looper flashes into the middle of the Korean squad, followed up by a re-engage from Mata. Without their defensive ultimates, SKT are forced to funnel into the Alistar Pulverize. Ultimately, the damage from a 60-minute whoosh on Xiao Hu is more than they can handle. This final teamfight is yet another testament to the power of Alistar, specifically in the hands of a great support player like Mata. His engaged judgment and the pressure he puts on SKT's primary targets, combined with the pick potential of LeBlanc, meant that SKT were on their toes the entire game. Overall, this incredibly long match rested on a few key points. While there's no doubt that RNG had a great advantage in the early game, never count out SKT when it comes to their prowess in the late game teamfighting. With Faker on Azir this game, against a high threat composition like the one RNG were fielding, the Korean legend was not able to play to his fullest potential and get off the huge late game damage that Azir is known for. Thanks for watching. For more League of Legends content featuring the pros, make sure to visit lolclass.com.